Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Diamond Picks TV, and I'm here with my co-host, uh, Idan Velleman. Hi, Idan. How are you Hi, doing? Vincent. I'm good. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, okay, we're going to talk about, of course, you know, what happened this year. We had just a year ago, we were all-time high. Now, after three different um, wonderful events like the Luna, like Celsius and the FC, uh, FTX, and of course, after the geo situation, we're at an all-time low. I mean, is it an all-time low? What are the consequences of the latest one of FTX? How big is it in reality? Is that really a drama? And what can we expect for the coming time? So uh, let's discuss that. Uh, let's discuss that. But it has been bloody. And everybody is talking about the end of crypto, that all life is going to be horrible, and that crypto has finally shown its face like it really was. And <laughs> we're going to see what we think of that because normally when people are talking about that this is the end of crypto those are good moments because that that uh, that's what i always heard <laughs> and then normally it, it's a turnaround because i mean if the blood is in the streets and everybody leaves those are the good moments to talk but we certainly it was a nice interesting drama didn't you think uh what, what did you think what is your take now on sam uh bankman uh, idan what is your feeling about this guy Today is going to talk about somewhere. Is, is going to, to to actually to give a speech today somewhere. So people really are pissed that he's still not in jail and, and not being arrested. I think what, what we, we need to do in the show. I, I like your I like your intro, and I think what's important is to analyze where we're we going from here, and and looking at the events that may come uh, as, as a contagious uh, contagious for uh, for for the FTX events. Yeah. And, and what's happening in the macroeconomic world and, and trying to understand where we're going from here and whether we really uh, reach the bottom and from here we can start going up because yep. it's, been, it's been bloody or we still have a way to go. Okay. So let's look at the big situation and zoom in. Uh, so this is interesting. This was 2020. And, uh, you know, just the Bitcoin at that time was about uh, 6,000 and it was it went up. Bang! To in 2021, it went up to uh, how much was it? Sixty-four thousand or something like that. Something 67, like yeah, sixty-seven thousand. 60, sixty-seven thousand. Sixty-seven. We had nice two bumps, and then and then from that moment on, it went down. You know, all the way, and we're all completely depressed. But if you look at it, where if you look at it, uh, if you look at it, where we are now here with sixteen thousand something, we are at um, October two thousand twenty. Yeah, so it's exactly, it's almost exactly two years ago. Two years ago, we, we were more or less on the same, uh, on the same, at the same level. But two years, two years ago, we, we were, we were in the uptrend and upwards. Yeah. We started from, from 6K and we went up uh, all the way to, um, yeah, you know, to Otama 67. Now we are definitely from November in the downwards trend. This hasn't been stopped. Um, no. and, and and let's talk a little bit what if we if we move to the next slide we can we can look at what happened. So just to, yeah. to remind everyone, exactly a year ago, exactly a year ago, the Fed announced for the first time that they're starting to change their monetary policy. They haven't done that. And, and back then the, the zero, the interest rate was zero, uh, but they said we're going to start increasing rate. And that's exactly where the market starts falling. Uh, we could see that less and less liquidity came into the market and in the, the crypto had, had a terrible uh, time because of that and the first uh, the first black uh, black swan event uh, was the luna one that was in the beginning yeah, yeah but i mean before the luna one so we went from 65000 we went down to about half you know so it first went down 50% yeah. because i remember on uh, around may 12 may 12 is my birthday but also the day that we um, the way we uh, we installed at Diamond Picks, we installed robots as protection on all our coins. All our strategies and all the coins had robots, which basically decide to go in and out. And from that mm -hmm. moment on, we went sort of sideways. And mm -hmm. then and then, uh, but with Luna, you know, Luna, Celsius, and FTX, everything went down. So that is yeah. really I, I remember that date very well. There's definitely one leg down before Luna, and that is to do with the Fed increasing rates. Then the yeah. Luna, there's another leg down. 
And then a few weeks afterwards, the sales use uh, stop withdrawal and, and 3AC, which was one of the biggest edge funds in, in, in crypto and Voyager, which is a big wallet. Um, they all they all went bankrupt, and then you see from there in June we are very very much on sideways. We had a, a small uptick from July to August, and then the Fed has said that they're going to increase the rates again, and then we had a small a small you know with another leg down, and and then everything looks okay because we feel now that the inflation has reached a, you know reached a peak, and a few weeks ago we all thought oh now with this macroeconomic environment. You know, Bitcoin is going to 30k, and then boom, FTX uh, went bankrupt, and yeah. that's another leg down, and that's where we are right now. Right? Yeah, and it's, I mean, and and it's really, I mean, if you look at FTX, I'm sure, like you, I've I've heard so many stories now about that the parents and Sam had 300 million of uh, of real estate in uh, in the Bahamas, that uh, that money moved from one company to the other. With a WhatsApp, with a WhatsApp thing, and then and in, and then you had an um, and if 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 the manager on the other side agreed, he just gave a thumbs up, and all the um, all the all the messages were deleted after uh, after deleted after a day or two. So there's absolutely there's no notes, there's no minutes, there's no nothing. It's just like, I mean, if you put kids in charge who are totally into um, into WhatsApp or or, or Telegram. And then they organize those, they use those tools to organize a company and they don't think that minutes are necessary or they don't think that oversight is necessary. And they just move billions around like it's toy money. That's what we saw with, um, that's what we saw with um, <clears throat> FTX. But let, let's put things in perspective for one second, okay? When th this was, of course, geopolitical. So this was, of course, geopolitical, the, the interest rates. And the interest rates went down about, up about, 10 times during this period. I mean, and, and, and that is way more than any other moment in history. But then Luna, what is the total amount of, um, of, of damage of Luna? How much was Luna totally worth? Where, worth? Do you remember? Wow. Well, it, was about, it was about 50 billion plus 16 billion, about 65 billion. So this is a 65 billion collapse out of an ecosystem, which at that time was maybe 1.5 trillion. Okay, so it was... It was, I mean, it was about 3% of the total ecosystem in, in downward trends. And then we had Celsius, you know, and then basically Celsius went down. I don't know how much, I mean, it's, it's not even, up. this money is gone. Luna is totally gone, but Celsius and Voyager and Free AC, that money is not gone. These companies are in disarray. They're, they're maybe in, 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 they may be bankrupt. But there's still money there, right? I mean, it's still Celsius. You see, cannot... see, it's gone, Vincent. It's the hedge funds gone. They're bankrupt. The money is gone. Voyager, Voyager, they may be saved by someone, maybe by Binance. But if not, they are the the, the money. Maybe people will get some penny on the cent. But okay, I'm not sure. And Celsius, Celsius, probably half of the money is gone, and now they are reaching a settlement, and they are actually pretty making some. Because I, I, I used to have some funds on Celsius, not so much, and I yeah. get all the all the correspondence, and I can I can see that they're making some progress uh, progress there as well. Yeah. Um, how much but money, how much, was, how much money? Where are we talking about these three? I don't was know, it I more think. or less than Luna? We, PSC was uh, 30, 30 milliard edge fund. Um, 30 million? Yeah, and, and um, Celsius maybe 10. So there, there, there's, there's been some, 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 some big money. but um, So it was it, the it, same it, as Luna, okay? So it was the uh, same as Luna. Uh, but of course, the market was already down uh, even, even more. You know, so probably maybe it was a trillion, a trillion or something like that. And then also then 40 billion of that is also 2.5%. Then we had the whole time nothing, and then FTX, and FTX is a huge is a huge deal, and everybody's talking about. It. But I think it's less money than more emotional that people say, "Well, this was a person we trusted. We thought he was a hero. He he was friends with all the politicians. He was he was he was everybody in the media loved him, and it turns out that they basically weren't able basically weren't able to uh, to were able to run the company in a decent way." Now, first, uh, FTX was a total of eight billion, and uh, and half of the money has been lost. I think so, something like that. You know, there's still a lot of money in there. It will take a while before it gets out. And then there's the other guy. Then there's the there's the fund they, they had. 
But the total amount of money is a lot less than Celsius, Voyager, and Free AC. But the, the total amount of, um, of publicity and, and, and damage to the ecosystem is way higher. But it is really not a huge amount of money. If you, for example, look at when, um, when uh, uh, Lehman Brothers went down, do you know how much damage to the economy was down with Lehman Brothers? Was that 80 mil million? No, no. 80 billion? No. Yeah. No. No, no, go up. Factor of 10 more. 800. 800. 1.15 yeah. 1. 1. 1. 1. trillion. <laughs> so it was, I mean, it's it, it, everything dwarfs, everything, all the, all the black swans events in the crypto market, you can do times 10. And then you are maybe, uh, then you get to the, uh, to the Lehman Brothers going down the drain. And then the amount of money that cost was trillions of trillions of trillions of dollars more. I mean, so it's, don't say that in the normal financial industry those stupid things go and happen. There are stupid things, and there's there's liars and cheaters. I think Luna was um, you know was was they they didn't have enough knowledge. They thought they were invincible. They had a god complex and that kind of stuff. But they weren't they were not criminals. I think the same uh, I think the same thing here. Celsius, Voyager, and Free AC. Maybe they're criminals, but most of them they the crash. Which caused the, the which which the, the crash, which was caused by all the other things like Luna, but also the Fed, the crash test they weren't able to to uh, come to come um, to survive that. And FTX, what would you say? Is it criminal or stupidity? How, how would I think you? It's say? Both. I think it's both. Look, uh, some some is not stupid, right? Some is not stupid. He knew what he was doing. Um, he didn't have an board of directors. He didn't have a CFO in his company. Yeah. So uh, it, it was ne neglected. It was negligent. And but at, at some point, when he realized that that the shitty defense, then he started doing criminal things as well. I actually, he, he yeah. admitted a couple of things on Twitter. What he did that he moved funds from from FTX to Almeda Research and back and and all of that. And those are not funds belongs to him. Belongs to fund funds that belong to the customer. So I think. There is a lot of criminal activities, uh, allegedly, allegedly. We don't know, right? So I allegedly... Know. We should, no, but we I, I agree with you. It is, <clears throat> first, you say he's very intelligent. And, and one part of his brain is completely smart. I mean, he made good software. The FTX, uh, um, yeah. the FTX exchange really worked. And you could have all kinds of sophisticated problems. In terms of governance, he was stupid. He was idiotic. He basically, he thought, you know, what are you thinking? He didn't have an experience and he did not listen to anybody. And then... Because of the trouble he got into, he did criminal things. But the total, all these back swans events, which basically caused crypto go down, is less than a hundred billion, and is less than three percent of the total value of the crypto market in one year ago, and it's less than nine percent of the total crypto market at this moment. You know, and and I just say if you compare it to Lehman which we also basically had a hard time surviving for the whole market. But there also trillions of dollars were lost as a combination of greed, uh, greed, uh, criminal activity and stupidity. And, uh, but it's, it's not unique to the crypto world. And also, I think it's not that they will not survive it. So that's, that's how I, I look at it. And it's a total stress test for our uh, ecosystem. And good companies will come out of it, and good regulations, self-regulations, and regulations from the uh, from the, the different governments, I think will get out of it. I mean, I think what you know, some now that ever now that suddenly uh, Binance saying, "Hey, we need to basically prove that we have these reserves, and we need to publish that, and blah blah." And every, the whole industry is saying, "Yes, we need to do that," in combination with all the regulators saying, "We're going to basically demand this." I think is good for the industry because you cannot trust super smart young people with mathematical skills and software skills to uh, organize a good system where people are being controlled and checked and where you basically have to you, you have to be responsible. You know, that is that is not when you're young and if you're 30 years old and you have 15 billion dollars um, in value. You do not become modest and you do not you do not think that you basically need to report to other people to prove that you're doing something right. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't want to have that responsibility and I'm a lot older. So um, I think so. This is a nice, interesting perspective. And you, now the question is to you, Edam. Now that we have this, uh, now that we're at, at one third of the total value of a year ago, uh, about 80 percent down. 
Do you think this is the end of crypto? Do you think the trust is totally gone? Do you think that governments will basically totally kill it and that it will be, you know, in a year from now, it will be totally gone? So it's not the end of crypto, um, but it's a big, uh, it's a big, um, <laughs> it's a big um, uh, pain for crypto. Um, it's going to take some time to um, to recover. We lost a lot of trust from the industry and outside the industry. Um, I think that uh, the regulations need to come in place in the US and in Europe and slowly but surely to get back the trust in the industry. And, you know, crypto is all based on, on networking. And when, when, when the networking is strong and more and more people are joining, uh, are joining the network, whether it's a Bitcoin or Ethereum and another ecosystem, then you'll see parabolic extent, uh, 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 parabolic uh, uh, growth of those ecosystem and, and companies and coins and price. But once you lose the trust, then then the network can break down. And I'm not saying that the break that Bitcoin is definitely not broken down and Ethereum neither, because those were all centralized parties who did things that have nothing to do with crypto, but they uh, created that, uh, that 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 you know that. That, that big crisis, um, but it's going to take more time, and we need regulation, and we need some responsible people, and we need we needed to wash out all those all those guys that the bad guys, and we are doing it as we speak. It may not be the end, and maybe we should talk about that next. What what's going to be next? Because on the slide you saw Genesis. I think it's a good a good way to move to Genesis and talk about that a little bit. Okay, well. Let's see. I just want to see how's the market reacting now in the last uh, couple of days. I thought that would be uh, would be interesting. So we yeah. had a nice big breakdown. So um, what was this? What was this last event? That was, that was last week. Right? That was that was the events of the FTX, and you can okay. see that since then the market is very volatile. It's going up, going down. We went down as to yeah. fifteen thousand three hundred. Now we're back to sixteen hundred five hundred. Yeah. Everyone's waiting for to see if there's more more pain. Yeah, along the road, okay. and um, you see the fear and greed is also a little bit stabilized. On the twenty, was was last week the same, so no, not so much change. But there's still extreme fear in the market if you compare it to where we were in November, or where we're in, even in March. You know, we we're on the yeah. fifty and the sixties, and now we are uh, reaching the bottom again on, on twenty. Yeah, and now we're going like okay. Like we have with Luna, we had the second effects were Celsius. Uh, now mm -hmm. everybody's, of course, wondering what will FTX cost? What kind of other companies will be influenced by uh, not having any kind of assets uh, guaranteed? Mm -hmm. And what is the verdict on that? Uh, what's the verdict on that? So let's talk a little bit about Genesis. Genesis is a prime brokerage, and, and Genesis has stopped withdrawal uh, a week ago after, um, after the, the F FTX debacle. Um, and maybe we should talk a little bit about what Genesis is, and we'll let another expert to explain uh, as well uh, what DCG. But if you go back just one second, so uh, Genesis is a prime prime brokerage, and they do three things. So prime brokerage, and they are the biggest in the industry, maybe the only one that's really um, in 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 the in the tradify world, in the normal financial world. This is those are those things are very uh, common. But Genesis is the first one. That, uh, th that is catering for, for the crypto business. And they do two things. So they have uh, assets in custody. They do over-the-counter trading. So every trading... So, wait, wait, one second. Custody assets. It means I can basically leave my private keys there and feel good about it? You're not because you're a retailer. But institutions can do that as well. That's what a prime brokerage do. Genesis mm -hmm. uh, did that with Gemini. Gemini, as Gemini, it's another exchange of the Wickelson brothers. And they had the earn program. And if you are an earn program and you can do the staking, Genesis was uh, powering that behind. So that's uh -huh. one of the things they did. Over the counter trading is done with big transactions through via uh, between one institution to another, or very big parties who want to buy a lot of Bitcoin or a lot of Ethereum. Um, and and they were doing it that as well. And the other things they did, and that's where they went into problems with three AC. Three arrows and FTX is the extend credit, and because of that, because of the, the extended credit to pay, first of all, three AC, and a few months, a few uh, a few months ago, the, their mother company needed to give them uh, to write off the bad loan from three AC and to create a new 
a loan from the mother company, DCG. And, and that was the first pain. And the second pain is now the FTX. And they have, a, they have extended credit there and they lost a lot of money. So in total, yep. we're looking at desktop withdrawal. And they declare that they are looking at a whole of one, 1. 1.1 million, million dollar, billion dollar that they don't have. Uh, and what, what, what is a billion? Is it a foul? Is it one billion or is it like? 1.1 billion. 1.1 billion. 1.1 billion. That's the whole they have right now. But is that so? That is uh, that is a relatively small amount of money. I mean, yeah. I'm always in Holland. If we say billion, we mean trillion. But I mean, you just mean a billion. Yeah, a milliard. Yeah, and that's is that the total and, amount of exposure they have also in the custody assets? I mean, uh, or is it much more? They 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 no. probably have a lot more assets there from customers. That's the whole they have. They have a whole of 1.1 milliard, and that's why they stop the withdrawal. And if they don't manage to raise that money. They are going to go to bankruptcy. Oh, they have a hole of 1.1. Okay, they good. Have a hole of 1.1. Yeah, let's let's listen to uh, how other people are explaining about that company. So, uh, yeah. yeah. So just before that, Vincent, we're we're looking at DCG, and that's the mother company of Genesis. And there's there's a lot of more companies related to DCG, and that's where where Coin Bureau can explain it uh, very well. What are we looking at? Okay. About to get spoiled. The concerns around all this are a big part of why crypto prices are heading south today, too. So for those unfamiliar, DCG is a crypto behemoth. It's invested in a number of companies, and that portfolio includes some of the most well-known names in the industry, including BitGo, Blockstream, Chainalysis, Circle, Coinbase, Coindesk, Dapper Labs, June Analytics, Etherscan, eToro, Fireblocks, and uh, FTX. And that's before we get to G in the alphabet, which is where things get really spicy. More on that in a moment. In short, DCG is a big, big deal. And its CEO, Gary Silbert, is one of the most powerful and elusive people in the industry. Which brings us to those Gs. Now, among its several subsidiaries, DCG counts both Genesis Trading and Grayscale not exactly small fry themselves. Now, Genesis is a prime broker. That is a deal that offers custody of crypto assets over the counter or OTC trading. That's the sort of buying and selling of crypto assets not available to us mere mortals. And it also extends credit to its clients for good measure. Think of it as sort of a crypto investment bank. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Genesis, that's most likely because well, it caters for big institutional clients and not peasants like us. There you go, bring it class into the game. Sorry. Now, <laughs> prime brokers make markets in OTC deals in which the assets being sought are sometimes not listed on exchanges. That means that they'll act as an intermediary in an OTC deal. They make the market. However, sometimes they find themselves in a position where they can't find a counterparty for a trade but they are still obligated to take the risk of a trade until a counterparty can be found. This is called an odd lot, and it's one of the risks that middlemen like Genesis face. The upside is, of course, that market making and brokerage can be incredibly profitable, especially when you're doing it for rich institutions. If you want a more detailed rundown of what prime brokers like Genesis do, then this tweet thread by Ram Alawalia is incredibly helpful. Link below. Now, Genesis is also one of the largest lenders and borrowers in the crypto market. And this is where it faces some of its biggest risks, including that of a mismatch in the duration of its assets and or liabilities. For example, as in the tweet thread I just mentioned, there's the example of loaning crypto out to funds for longer terms, i.e. long duration. However, they borrow funds from retail users at shorter duration and redemption through, for example, Gemini Earn. When retail rushes to withdraw from these products, they put the broker in a bind as they need to call back their loans early, which costs money. On top of this, as a prime broker, you have counterparty risk in case any of your institutional borrowers don't repay. Now, one of Genesis's recent counterparties was none other than Three Arrows Capital, which cost Genesis, quote, hundreds of millions. The Genesis CEO at the time, Michael Morrow, resigned as a result of this, and Genesis had to be bailed out by its parent company, 
DCG, another good example of how quickly contagion can spread in the crypto market. Since then, of course, the crypto market has gone from bad to worse. There are concerns that Genesis might have had loans out to several CFI lending platforms whose subsequent failures could mean that Genesis has a lot of loans outstanding that it might now have to recall. Now, Genesis's exposure to FTX is a bit murkier, and Genesis initially claimed it had limited exposure to the now collapsed exchange. In a pattern that is now becoming wearyingly familiar, however, that later changed to, uh, well, when we said no exposure, we did mean that our derivatives business actually has $175 million stuck on FTX, but, you know, it's all good, or something along those lines. This resulted in Daddy DCG having to fork out $140 million to keep the wolf from Genesis's door, an amount that now pales in comparison to the reported $1 billion that the company later claimed it needed to be able to honor client withdrawals. Boy, that escalated quickly. Whoa. Yeah, so it, it, it may be a bit complex for, for people. No, no, but I mean, no, there's this DG, it's a huge company with a hell of a lot of co companies. And But they also said that at one point that FTX was part of it, or did I mis misunderstand that? They invested in FTX, so they lost, but oh. there have been many companies like Sequoia and other VCs that, that invest in FTX. So so they lost that investment, but that, that has nothing to do with liquidity and cash flow. They have oh. a big problem of, they have a hole of 1.1 million. And and they there, there's no one there's no one really who's looking to rescue them and and the fear right now in crypto and maybe we go to the next slide so we can look at it the fear in crypto that they won't be able to bail out and they go into chapter eleven again to bankruptcy and if that will happen Vincent then I expect the market to go uh, to go down those are a couple of of tweets from the last couple of days absolutely zero bits for Genesis and DCG race yeah. Preparing yeah. for bankruptcy. There's and, and another. This just, hey, and, and they, they just want they, this company Genesis needs a billion, but the amount of um, the amount of assets they have, you know, like the, where they basically have these uh, the, where they store the private keys, that is way way much more. I mean, it's really um, if they, they the, the the damage to the industry could be much bigger than a billion. Because a billion in, in these all these terrible things, where fifty billion this and forty billion that and 10 billion with FTX. 1 billion doesn't sound like a lot, but there's a whole, there's a lot more involved in uh, we'll that. We'll talk about it in a second. We will touch Grayscale in a second. We'll try to do that. But, but so there is another tweet saying, so how will it, in end, DCG will be able to raise sufficient funds? They already bailed out Genesis once with 3IC. Um, who will take the risk? Who will take the risk? There's the crypto market is not very attractive right now to big institutions and investors. And, yeah. um, yeah, they, they may they may have to go to bankruptcy. So so that that's where it stands now. There's there's another tweak to the story, and you just mentioned it. DCG owns Grayscale, and Grayscale is the biggest Bitcoin trust in the world, with 360k Bitcoins in their assets. Now those assets are safe, and they are uh, they're being they have a custodial in in Coinbase, so that's not a problem. But you can see that the trust share has been down a lot recently and has reached a discount of more than 50%. And they won't be able to collapse, but if they need to release those funds and in order to survive the company, that means that there will be 360K Bitcoin in the market soon. And that may mean that it will have a big sales pressure. So ah. I don't know if that will happen. Grayscale is part of DCG. DCG is in problems because of Genesis. 1.1 million hole, and that's where we stand right now. So, okay. and how many is, of those? How many of those companies, which I didn't know before, and which are behind the scenes doing business for, with all the big guys, where we are never uh, invited to? How many others are there? Do you have any idea? Because I mean, I can imagine there's ten more. I think those are the biggest. So, so Barry Silver it was very early in the in the crypto space in 2012, and I mean, if you look at his portfolio, it's pretty impressive. He, he built an empire. Um, the empire may may be fall or not, but um, it's a it's a strong CEO. He knows what he's doing. Um, I personally think that he won't uh, fall for uh, Chapter 11. I think he will manage to get to 1.1 milliard. It's going to be very exciting to see what's going to happen in the coming days. He needs to get that funds 
in the coming uh, days. Uh, grayscale, I don't think there is any problem there. I mean, I don't see him resolving that. Uh, I don't think he, he will he will sell it because he earns good money. He earns a lot of millions in, in commission on this grayscale fund. So there's no reason for him to blow off this, uh, this trust. Um, but yeah. we don't know what we don't know. We've seen that uh, several times in the last couple of months. So let's stay cautious. And, and see and see what what's happened. But there's there's some good news as well, right? So and I mean, I would say, uh, Idan, you're really doing a great job in in making me very excited about it. I mean, I always uh, I always look at okay, well, you know, just like uh, everything is down eighty percent. I've been in this uh, in this situation ten times. I mean, I uh, read in the Financial Times of uh, today that you know it's pretty clear that crypto is a scam and it's, it's going away totally. So I go, okay, this is good news. When when people who do not know anything about it start saying this kind of stuff, you know, you, there's two kinds of problems. When people do not have any knowledge of the industry and say, hey, you need to buy it. Like if the hairdresser basically starts talking about it, you're in trouble because we're on top of the world. And whenever all the columnists of the traditional financial industry are saying crypto is a scam and it's going totally away, then I think also this is another big moment, but that's a big moment when we hit the bottom. So that's, uh, is there any positive news in the but crypto world or outside the crypto world? I think there's a couple of things. So first of all, I, we don't have that type. If you go back to the next slide, um, on there's, there's actually the macroeconomics, and we saw that so much impact the macroeconomic had on, on the crypto yep. industry. It all started with the Fed, uh, you know, uh, uh, switching the monetary policy and start increasing rates. It would never happen if we would stay. If we had stayed on a zero, zero, uh, zero percent uh, interest rate policy. And it looks like we are reaching inflation is going. Rate. Inflation is going down, yeah. right? I mean, this is going it, down. It is also a pain because the the whole building industry is now collapsing in America. It's down 30, 40 percent compared to last quarter. We see that happening all over the world. Um, we see that the the normal, you know, the, the, it's with an empl employment employment is still doing very well, and and consumers are still spending a little bit of money. But I think that that will be the next uh, next step. We'll go into a recession, but they actually expect that the recession will be will be reasonable. You know, won't be too big. I mean, isn't that what everybody is uh, predicting? Again, I've heard, I've heard so many opinions, and the one thing I can tell you, Vincent, no one knows. The only thing we know that the, the, the inflation has probably reached the peak. Um, we see that the Fed is realizing that, and it may start uh, uh, lowering the the rate hikes. And maybe in Q1 will stop completely. And maybe at some stage it will start to pivot and will start reducing the rates, and that should trigger a, a, a bull market to their own risk assets like Bitcoin. Um, so we need to reach the bottom. The contagious, the FTA contagious need to, to come down. We need to realize that all the companies are right now safe who manage to survive. And there are no other big, uh, big entity that's going to fall. And once we reach that, and that I think in the coming weeks, it's going to be very clear whether we have another a bank, big bankruptcy or not. And after that, we wait for the macroeconomic conditions to be, uh, to be more positive and we'll start uh, seeing uh, that the crypto market is uh, is recovering, that that's that's how I see. And I think you have an, a nice one from uh, oh the besties. Yeah, I, I just want to say I have a couple of things. I, you and I on Saturday. What do we do on Saturday? We go to the sport club and we listen to the besties. And uh, and 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 you know, could you explain who these four people are? Those are four very very smart and rich uh, venture capitalists. Uh, some of them who you know who uh, co-founded PayPal, and some of them who co-founded Facebook, and that that's the level. And some of them who, who were from the first uh, guys who work in Google, and and they have um, and they are friends of each other, and they are all a little bit on the edge of t between forty-five and fifties, and they have a, they they have all in and all in podcast every week, and they talk about politics, they talk about the tech industry, they talk about the economy, they talk about events like FTX, etc. Yeah. And um, I would I would recommend let's let's we I will send the link into this uh, to the notes and we'll put it in the speaker. But let's listen to a couple of seconds uh, on, okay. to enjoy them. Tell you a funny story. So I, uh, I I was in I was in and then I when I landed there was a an uh, assistant message 
on the plane and then uh, the pilot texts me like, hey, bad news, we're not gonna be able to take you to tomorrow. There's an error message and if we can't resolve it, we can't fly. I said, okay. So I text Sachs, I'm like, hey dude, I'm in a really tough spot. Is there any way that I, you know, I could catch a flight you know, with you tomorrow? Absolute dead silence. Uh-oh. Three hours later, Paul, pilot Paul texts me and says, good news, cleared us, we're going tomorrow. I text Sachs right away. Hey, no worries, it's all resolved. In eight seconds, he responds, awesome, with an exclamation mark. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's the delay. <laughs> that chart alone, I think, can win the vote. Okay, let's pull up the chart then. So here is the federal debt, total public debt as a percentage of gross domestic product. As you can see in the 70s and 80s, uh, we were at under 50%. The 90s, we started, you know, growing I don't, I don't think this matters. I think everybody, yeah. every self-proclaimed intellectual looks at this chart and says, oh my God, we've exceeded 100%. You know, the, the empire is going to go to ruin. That's not why the empire goes to ruin. We have... And this is my favorite guy. I mean, he basically uh, came from a very modest background. He, um, he, he from abused parents, and he was very smart. Went to, went to, uh, went to school. Became smart. Started working at Facebook. Invested them in them. Were invested in, uh, in Uber and, and and about a hundred other companies. He's worth one point four billion. And if he talks about the industry, if he talks about what he think what, what, about crypto, what, um, Elon Musk, I mean, all the different sort of things in the tech world. They talk about the tech world in general, and they also talk about the crypto world. I really, really, really enjoy them. I can totally, uh, totally recommend them. So um, let's, uh, so I, I would say to everybody, just read them. But the person who I think is really interesting for, to talk about the crypto world is, um, is uh, Katie, Katie uh, Wood. Katie Wood. Sure, Oops, sorry, let me see. And Katie is the most optimistic person on the crypto world forever. And she's doing it in a very systematic way. I mean, she's very positive about uh, Tesla, which she thinks will hit, um, you know, like uh, 1600, the, the, the stock price. She thinks that Bitcoin will raise a billion. It will be um, will reach a billion, a million dollars per, 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 uh, per Bitcoin. And she has very good ways to, to back it up. Let's listen to her for a moment. But, uh, on to the into of the security Take a look at uh, the the blockchains Let, let's use uh, uh, Bit, the Bitcoin blockchain and ethereum what you'll find is they have the infrastructure the technology has not skipped a beat uh, throughout this entire crisis in fact the hash rate uh, Bitcoin's hash rate is at an all-time high and that is a real indication of the security of the network. Uh, on Ethereum, we're seeing uh, the total value uh, uh, staked at 24 billion. That is an all-time high. Uh, so we think the infrastructure is working beautifully. Um, as far as Coinbase, uh, this is an onshore uh, regulated uh, company and uh, wanting to help shape regulations. Brian Armstrong, the CEO, and Alicia uh, CFO have been leaning in into what's going on right now and saying, okay, uh, regulators, we need more clarity in order to protect, uh, to protect investors. Those who wanted to uh, get involved with uh, certain types of crypto were forced offshore and uh, look at what's happened. So um, I, I think that Coinbase is going to come out here uh, looking very, very strong. It just lost a very big competitor in right. FTX. Well, uh, well, what is the market missing, though? Because, you know, that could be one narrative, Kathy. But at the same time, we haven't exactly seen shares of Coinbase rally since FTX has collapsed. Do you think to yeah. you that represents potentially broader concern about just people's interest in crypto following FTX's collapse? No, I think it's more fear. I think uh, uh, many people say we don't know what we don't know. Uh, and uh, so what we do is we step back, uh, you know, put a little perspective into the situation here. And what do we have? Uh, so the entire crypto asset ecosystem is an $800 billion ecosystem. Apple is three times larger in terms of market cap. So that's some perspective. Many people are saying, well, oh, okay, is this another Lehman? Could this be... Uh, you know, could, could we see the domino effect here? I've just given you one reason why. 
uh, the banking system uh, back in uh, 08, 09, trillions and trillions of dollars. And it was the global banking system. Uh, right now we have, it seems from FTX, uh, five to $10 billion uh, in creditors. Uh, if uh, as, uh, as FTX has uh, filed bankruptcy, they will be making claims. Uh, if you look at Lehman, that was $1.2 trillion in claims. So again, just trying to put perspective, this is fraud. This is Madoff. Madoff was $64 billion mm -hmm. in claims. Again, FTX, 5 to $10 billion. Now, I know that uh, crypto assets are, you know, they attract a lot of attention. This is... Um, you know, the, 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 the three revolutions we talk about all the time, you know, a new monetary system in, in terms of the first global, private, not government controlled, digital, right. uh, rules-based monetary system. That's Bitcoin, a very big idea. DeFi is a very big idea. And uh, while that has been uh, thrown into question in terms of, you know, shifting from uh, one exchange to another. Uh, we've had a lot of shifting around, but I think uh, I think DeFi, in terms of taking the middlemen out of financial services and and making the ecosystem much more transparent with much less counterparty risk, is going to take off. It will continue to move forward. We believe. Kathy, I think one of the things we're trying to figure out is how long that we think the so that is, um, and, and you see, she, she doesn't give a beat. She's still very convinced. She's saying um, there is, of course, in, in the crypto world, there's also the normal things which humans do. There's, uh, there's stupidity, there's fraud, and there is, uh, and there's um, one effect on top of the other. But that also happens in the, in, the, in, the, in the big fiat world at a scale a thousand times bigger. And she says the big ideas are still totally intact. And I, I happen to believe that. I happen to believe that, 99% of everything, all the coins in the 99.9% .9 of the, all the coins in the crypto world are st either stupid, are, are, are technically not good enough, don't have anything to offer. But, you know, out of 25,000 coins which are currently tracked on, uh, on, uh, mm. on, on, on coin mar market cap, um, there is, uh, there's, there's at least 250 coins which are really, really worth it and which will develop further. So that's yeah. what I also want to give as a perspective, uh, as a perspective of um, what... Totally agree with you, Vincent. Totally agree with you. Okay. Yeah. All right. We uh, said we'd, we'd do it for half an hour. Um, well. Then, and, and I just wanted to, uh, to, to, want to say, just want to take a quick look at how we are doing, you know, with, uh, of course, we, we are, um, we're diamond picks. And the best thing is if that you can see in our um, in our play mode, which you can basically go to the website Diamond Picks, make an account in two seconds, and you come in our play mode, and you can see that since November the first, when all this last thing happened, we uh, if you look for example at Hereford, which is our Bitcoin only strategy, we did minus five point three percent, and Bitcoin went down nineteen percent. If we uh, then go back to um, when did Celsius happen? Uh, when did Celsius? Yeah. Happen? In June, the beginning of June. In June, let's say let's tell you how we did in June. So in June, it was forty-six percent and six percent. We went down. If we look at another strategy, you know, that's uh, the the big the big coins, Duroc. We went thirteen percent down, while the market went down forty-seven. And if we look at my birthday, because my birthday was May the twelfth. So let's look at uh, May the twelfth and see uh, if you're we then did. Hmm? You're on April. Okay, let me look at May, 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 May Pro. Very good. Then you can see, okay, we went down 12% since everything or everything went to hell and the market went down 55%. Yeah. And uh, and if we look at here for it, which is this Bitcoin only, I think that one is really doing well. Yeah, that went down 6%. Point. And we can look at, uh, we can look at, um, at Pennywell, which is the green, uh, which is the green one. So our strategies went much more, you know, zero, zero minus ten, while the market went a lot further. So you can play with that, and we can execute these kinds of trades, these kinds of smart strategies inside uh, Binance or a bit Favo and other ones are to come. Please uh, take a look at it and and try us out. We are here to protect you, and we're here to help you grow. That's what we do at Diamond Picks and the coins. And the, the assets are in your own, uh, in your own, uh, as in your own um, 
wallet on your on your favorite uh, on your favorite exchange. So um, that's what we want to say. Okay, that is. Whew. It was. Um, it's. It's not a boring life in the crypto world, uh, Idan. And you have to keep. Um, you have to keep the faith. Sometimes I even. I, I also w worry about my God. Where is this going? And then I need to step back and I need to listen to other people. Even though I went through this five times, five six times. When we started in 2000, we did started to do in 2013. We started with it. And and, and Ronald von Munzel told me about Bitcoin in 2011. And I bought my first 100 bitcoins, you know, for seven euros a pop in I think in 2012, and sold them in 2013 for my uh, for my uh, to buy a Tesla. That was very the first stupid mistake I made. But still, I think the reason why this is interesting is a new monetary system which is international, not dominated by uh, governments. But still, you see, we need some kind of governance, even though it, we don't need it to be organized by governments, but we need to have some kind of control. So I really wonder how that's going to happen, because I see that people steal and people are stupid and we need some oversight and we need some good governance of these institutions. So that's what we learned, but we keep the faith. Anything uh, you expect in the next uh, in the next two months? We just monitor. Listen, we, we can, we can, I don't know. We don't know. No one knows. If anyone can tell you, they don't know. We're monitoring. We hope they're not going to be another bankruptcy. And we're going to get into a calm period, a little bit of sideways, and then start moving upwards. That's, that's yeah. what I... Yeah. Well, I think what we need is, I mean, the international situation is really important. We need inflation to go down. We need not, uh, we need a recession, which is not too heavy. We need the war in the Ukraine coming to some kind of an uh, understanding. We cannot go on, you know, winter after winter after winter. Everybody's building on my house now to make the whole thing energy neutral. And we, I'm going to use air conditioning instead of central heating. And I'm going to install warm heat pumps. That's a very good thing that we basically accelerate that, but that needs to be solved and the economy needs to get used to it. And all these big shocks to the crypto systems need to work its way out. Companies need to become, uh, need to go bankrupt, be reorganized, and uh, new measurements needs to be imp implemented in, in governance. And also there needs to be self-regulations, like you know, proof exchanges that you basically have my assets into account. I want to know that from Binance, and I want to know that from all the uh, all the experience and all that craziness of 18%, you know, for staking fees. I, we, you and I had a great conversation. You told me about, oh wow, why don't we put all this money into staking? You were very, you're always very enthusiastic about new things, and I really go, wow, this is great. But when Luna started to do it at 18% and Celsius, I think uh, at 9% or 10%, at a certain point you go like, okay, there needs to be something which I can understand what people do with this money, except providing liquidity. That thing needs to be work itself out. I think this will take until quarter one. Quarter one, we need it for the international economy and also the crypto world to work out. And I think from Q2, we will start seeing some positive uh, signs. And then I hope that the second half of uh, 2023, we will be able to go up in value. We at Binance Diamond Picks are really doing our best to also make money on bad times because, I mean, that's also we need to make money in good times, but we also need to make money. We need to protect you at bad times, but we also need to be able to grow. And I think you're doing a really good job in working on those robots. OK, so far, when do we see each other again uh, when we have when is our next Diamond Picks? In two weeks time. Two weeks time. Sounds like a good idea. OK, uh, I'm, I'm starting the end video. I just want to say, um, it says at the end, please make an account. You need 5,000 minimum. That's gone, right? I mean, what is the minimum? Zero. Zero yeah. is the minimum. It's become efficient. You can try us out until 200 euros. We basically manage your money for free. And then above it, it's 2% a year and 15% of the profit. Okay. See you next time. Bye.